can be really fascinating to go back and pinpoint nights in wrestling that changed the landscape of an entire company or indeed the business itself. From the formation of the New World Order in WCW to the Montreal incident in the WWF, there have been moments in pro wrestling that have helped shape and evolve what we see today. In the case of Extreme Championship Wrestling, August 27th, 1994 is probably the most significant date in the company's history. On that hot August night, Eastern Championship Wrestling title holder Shane Douglas captured the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, and after winning the belt, in the centre of the ring, Shane Douglas shocked NWA committee members by claiming the NWA was dead while throwing the championship belt to the ground. Shortly afterwards, Eastern Championship Wrestling cut all ties with the NWA and Extreme Championship Wrestling was born. This video takes a look at one of the more controversial moments in the history of the National Wrestling Alliance. So to understand the magnitude of Shane Douglas' actions in the summer of 1994, we need to take a look at Eastern Championship Wrestling. In 1992, the Tri-State Wrestling Alliance, a promotion that operated out of Philadelphia, was sold to Todd Gordon. Todd Gordon was, and still is, the president of a family-owned jewellery store in Philadelphia, and in 1992, after purchasing Tri-State Wrestling, he renamed his new acquisition to Eastern Championship Wrestling. Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert was the head booker of Eastern Championship Wrestling, and it was he who was responsible for getting Eastern Championship Wrestling a TV deal with Sports Channel Philadelphia. Eastern Championship Wrestling also became affiliated with the NWA, and due to WCW formally withdrawing from the National Wrestling Alliance in 93, Eastern Championship Wrestling became one of the only NWA promotions who still had wide TV exposure. The impact of WCW withdrawing from the National Wrestling Alliance can't be overstated enough. The exposure that World Championship Wrestling gave the NWA was priceless. In the very same month that WCW and the NWA cut their business ties, a 28-year-old New York native made his way to Eastern Championship Wrestling to replace Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, who had a disagreement with Todd Gordon and was let go from the company. This 28-year-old New York native had also worked in WCW and was seeking a new challenge. And you may have heard of this guy. His name was Paul Heyman. In 1994, Jim Crockett Jr. had begun once again promoting with the NWA. And seeing as Eastern Championship Wrestling had a television deal and was one of a small few NWA-affiliated promotions that had a TV audience, Crockett asked Todd Gordon to hold a tournament on ECW TV to crown a new NWA Heavyweight Champion. The NWA title had become unified with the WCW Heavyweight Championship at this point, and the NWA board had decided to bring back the £10 of gold and have a new official National Wrestling Alliance Heavyweight Champion. The NWA president at the time, Dennis Corluzzo, did indeed want a new NWA Champion, but he was very much against the tournament being held in Eastern Championship Wrestling to crown the new title holder. So the NWA President, Dennis Corluzzo, had took notice of Jim Crockett and Todd Gordon's relationship here, and became wary of Jim Crockett's motives. In the NWA President's mind, he thought that Jim Crockett was trying to do the exact same thing he had done in WCW in the 80s, and that was pretty much give one company a monopoly over the NWA title. Due to his suspicions, Carl Uzo himself decided to oversee the entire televised tournament, something that Todd Gordon did not take kindly to. And on top of this, the NWA president Carl Uzo had been quite vocal with his criticisms in regard to the man who was selected to win the tournament, Mr. Shane Douglas. So before we continue on here with the Todd Gordon and NWA saga, let's briefly look at Shane Douglas up to this point. Shane had been wrestling from a very young age, training alongside Mick Foley in the mid-80s and going on to become a popular wrestler in the Universal Wrestling Federation. From here, he would join WCW and form a tag team with Johnny Ace, known as the Dynamic Dudes. Many people will remember the Dynamic Dudes as these rad skateboarders, a tag team that was, and still is, very hard to take seriously. Shane had gotten himself into some hot water around this time, with booking committee member Jim Cornette washing his hands of the tag team after Shane went over his head to try to get finishes changed that helped Shane look strong. 
After this first stint in WCW, Douglas found himself in the World Wrestling Federation in 1990 and to be fair, he was booked quite favourably. He got his first big break when he replaced and injured Shawn Michaels in the Rockers tag team for a very short period of time and on the house shows, he would get some surprising victories over the likes of Buddy Rose and Dino Bravo. He never did break into the big time on TV though and eventually he went back to WCW in 1992. In this second WCW stint, Shane was booked quite well, winning the WCW tag titles with Ricky Steamboat and feuding with the likes of the Hollywood Blondes and Paul Orndorff. I do think it was this WCW stint here where Shane Douglas showed the world that he was an extremely capable professional wrestler. By the time that Shane made his way to Eastern Championship Wrestling then in August of 1993, he had gained a ton of experience and he used this experience to help develop his heel franchise character, a character that gave Shane great success in his career. One month after debuting in Eastern Championship Wrestling, Shane won the promotion's heavyweight title and in one of Shane's more well received matches, he picked up the title for the second time at the Ultimate Jeopardy show held on March 26th 1994. In this match, Shane defeated Terry Funk in an Ultimate Jeopardy steel cage match. So Shane Douglas was the Eastern Championship Wrestling Heavyweight title holder when this tournament was being booked to crown a new NWA Heavyweight Champion. Shane was booked to win the tournament and it would be televised, the NWA title would be back in circulation and you'd think that this would all be great news for Todd Gordon, Paul Heyman and Shane Douglas. After all, with the heritage and the history of the NWA Heavyweight title, having the belt on your show would lend a great deal of credibility, right? Well, Dennis Coraluzzo, the NWA president that we talked about previously, had just about rubbed everybody the wrong way. Todd Gordon was unhappy with how Dennis felt regarding Eastern Championship Wrestling somewhat monopolising the title, and if Todd Gordon wasn't happy, then Paul Heyman wasn't happy also. Paul Heyman was also now the head booker of Eastern Championship Wrestling, so having Dennis Coraluzzo come in and oversee this tournament must have irked him a little too. Shane Douglas was annoyed that the NWA president felt he was unworthy of their championship and also he was annoyed that Dennis had publicly stated that Shane Douglas wasn't just unworthy but also unreliable. You may also be wondering here why the president of the NWA just didn't select another champion but that's not how things worked. NWA champions were determined by votes from the board of directors. I'm sure you guys know this but I'm just throwing it out there. But anyway, you can see here how the president of the National Wrestling Alliance himself was making what should have been a historic and noteworthy night for Eastern Championship Wrestling an absolute nightmare for the promotion. Todd Gordon and Paul Heyman decided that it was all just simply not worth it and what would happen when Shane won this tournament would turn out to be historic in its own right. Paul Heyman said on the Rise and Fall of ECW documentary, we needed to do something that separated us from the old school wrestling business. Our main singles wrestler was the franchise Shane Douglas and Shane was in the tournament to crown a new NWA champion. We knew that the NWA was everything we wanted to get away from, old school, old mentality. We wanted to shake everything and everybody up. So on the 27th of August 1994 in the ECW Arena in Philadelphia, the tournament was held. Shane Douglas defeated the Tasmaniac and Dean Malenko before meeting two Cold Scorpio in the finals. Behind the scenes, Todd Gordon, Paul Heyman and Shane Douglas had came up with an angle which only they knew about, an angle that would see Shane Douglas and indeed Eastern Championship Wrestling disrespect the NWA and its legacy as a whole. It's been said that the whole idea was conceived initially by Gordon and Heyman and it was Paul Heyman who had the pleasure of persuading Shane Douglas to go along with the plan. While Shane was hesitant at first to show any kind of disrespect to the NWA, Paul reasoned that the only negative would be that NWA traditionalists would see them as traitors and by this point, NWA traditionalists did not make up the vast majority of professional wrestling fans. Along with Dennis Coraluzzo's comments regarding Shane Douglas being an unreliable performer, it mustn't have took too much to persuade the franchise. 
Douglas has since said that his father's motto was to do right by the people that do right by you, and he felt that Gordon and Heyman were doing right by him while the NWA president was seemingly burying him at every given opportunity. Shane himself said on the Forever Hardcore DVD documentary that his ultimate decision to disrespect the NWA championship was due to Carl Uzo publicly disrespecting him. Shane Douglas said, Mike Tanay called me up and asked if I would be on his radio show. He asked me if I had heard what Dennis Corluzzo said about me. At this point, I had never heard of Dennis and I had no idea who the guy was, but I did know he was associated with the NWA. So I heard that he was telling people that they shouldn't book me. You have to remember that around this time, bookings were important for us as ECW was running maybe once a month at this point. So here's this guy who I've never had dealings with, I had no idea who he was, and he's going out and telling people on tonight's radio show not to book me, telling people I'm unreliable, and telling people I took money from him and never showed up to perform. Really slanderous stuff that could have a negative impact on my bottom line. So when this NWA deal was going to go down in ECW, it was Paul Heyman himself that came up with the idea. It was what we call in our business a swerve. Dennis and the NWA think it's going to be their night, but all of a sudden, the franchise and ECW pull the rug out from underneath them. After defeating Two Cold Scorpio and winning the NWA World Heavyweight Championship, and while the NWA president looked on, Shane Douglas grabbed the mic. Shane listed off some past NWA champions from Lou Thez, Buddy Rogers, Terry Funk, Dusty Rhodes, even Ric Flair, a man who Shane had his own problems with. Shane said in the tradition of these past champions, he accepts the NWA Championship. While looking at the belt, Shane said, This is it tonight, Dad before announcing that these past champions can all kiss his ass. Shane then threw the title to the mat as Coral Uzo looked on. Shane then got angry, stating that he would not accept a torch being handed down to him from an organisation that died seven years prior. Shane then grabbed his Eastern Championship Wrestling title and declared himself as the new ECW World Champion, stating that this is a new era in professional wrestling and that Eastern Championship Wrestling was set out to change the face of wrestling as a whole. Paul Heyman said, when Shane Douglas took the NWA Championship with its lineage going all the way back to 1905 with George Hackenschmidt, and proclaimed the Eastern Heavyweight Championship as the new ECW World Heavyweight Championship, it ushered in the era that we were looking to champion. Coral Uzo went backstage where Todd Gordon said that this was all just a worked shoot, claiming here that the idea was to begin a NWA vs ECW angle. When the NWA president was approached for comment by interviewers, he stated that he was not going to say anything until after he meets with Jim Crockett Jr. and the other directors of the board. He then publicly said that Shane Douglas' actions were a disgrace. Of course, Coral Uzo would then attempt to strip Shane Douglas of the NWA Championship, stating that Eastern Championship Wrestling was under NWA jurisdiction and he was going to request that the NWA strip Douglas of both the NWA and ECW titles. In response to this, Eastern Championship Wrestling President Todd Gordon said on TV, I listened with great interest as the representative of the NWA Board of Directors took it upon himself to inform you that they have the power to force NWA Eastern Championship Wrestling not to recognise the franchise, Shane Douglas, as a World Heavyweight Champion. Well, as of noon today, I have folded NWA Eastern Championship Wrestling. In its place will be ECW, Extreme Championship Wrestling, and we recognise the franchise Shane Douglas as our World Heavyweight Champion. We encourage any wrestler in the world today to come to the ECW to challenge for that belt. This is ECW, Extreme Championship Wrestling, changing the face of professional wrestling. And so with this, Eastern Championship Wrestling had not only parted ways with the NWA, but they had also declared themselves as Extreme Championship Wrestling. After the split of ECW from the NWA, Coral Uso held a second NWA title tournament in November of 1994 to try to, once again, resurrect the NWA and bring it back to the prominence it once had within professional wrestling. This time, the tournament was won by Chris Candido. 
The damage though had already been done, thanks to the damage that ECW and Shane Douglas delivered on that hot August night, the NWA brand was unable to recover despite Coral Uso's efforts. Shane Douglas and ECW capitalised on the controversy immediately following the incident. Douglas would cut promos that blurred the lines between reality and kayfabe as he continued on as the Extreme Championship Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion. These worked shoot promos that Shane would continue to deliver drew the attention of wrestling fans and wrestling journalists while also ensuring that Shane Douglas would remain a key player during the rise of Extreme. The rebranding of Eastern Championship Wrestling made a lot of noise and if there's one thing that's evident here, it's the fact that sticking to tradition sometimes hampers the progression of change. Had Eastern Championship Wrestling stayed as an NWA promotion, had Todd Gordon, Paul Heyman and Shane Douglas played by the rules, then the evolution of professional wrestling as a whole would have been very, very different. Yes, Eastern Championship Wrestling was already doing hardcore and extreme wrestling, but Shane Douglas throwing down the NWA Championship was a moment that drew an incredible amount of attention to the Philadelphia-based company. <laughs>